Hey guys, welcome to my workshop. And today I'll take you through how I built my RFID door lock system. Okay, so for this project, you're gonna need some wire strippers, cutters, uh, Dremel and a drill are useful, but not completely necessary. Multimeter is also extremely useful. Uh, you need solder, soldering iron, hot glue gun, heat shrink, and heat gun are useful, but again, not completely necessary. And some zip ties, I guess, if you want. Um, yeah, that's mostly all you need. I'll post a parts list also. Um, so for this project, the it has three main components. The RFID reader assembly, the control unit, and the servo lock interface arm. So yeah, let's get started and see how this works. Start with the RFID reader assembly. Okay, so this is basically just a waterproof enclosure that I got from DigiKey. And I drilled a single hole in it to allow wires to pass through. And inside we have the actual RFID reader itself, which is an ID20LA. Got it from SparkFun. It has the largest range of their RFID antennas. It's for 125 kilohertz RFID tags. And I attached the uh, breakout board, which was also from SparkFun, which just makes it easier to uh, solder wires to the pins rather than actually directly to the reader itself. So I definitely recommend that. That was super useful. Inside I also have a single NeoPixel LED. Uh, if you don't not familiar with NeoPixels, it's just an RGB LED that's individually controllable from a microcontroller. And it's pretty cool because it only uses three wires, power, ground, and a single data pin. And it can control multiple LEDs and make it do whatever you want. It's just a really cool little light. Okay, so I uh, you gotta leave some room. Meshing with the wires in here is kind of tricky. Taking this apart and back has caused several of these solder joints to break. So I recommend um, hot glue after you're done to for strain relief. Okay, um, as far as the breakout board is concerned, for this whole entire assembly, you're gonna need six wires. One data for the NeoPixel, the rest are from the breakout board. The NeoPixel actually shares power and ground with the breakout board in a not so elegant manner, but I'm sure you can do better. Okay, so on this breakout board, we need to have a wire coming from ground, wire coming from the reset pin, wire coming from the form pin, wire coming from the D0 pin, and a wire for VCC, which is power. Okay, so those are the wires you're gonna need for to operate the RFID reader. I also have kind of horribly done this. I've uh, connected to this other ground pin, which is actually directly from the reader, and the other VCC pin to power the NeoPixel off the same uh, power lines. Okay, so that's um, really all you need for here. Uh, so just stuck this antenna in here with a dab of super glue to keep it from coming loose. And yeah, it doesn't need to be waterproof, but it's nice for outside applications. Again, I would recommend super gl or hot glue all along those pins too, so you can avoid the problems I had with uh, opening this up and having all of your solder connections come off. Yeah. So yeah. This is the reader assembly. So again, you need six wires. You should probably measure the distance from where your reader is going to go to the control unit, cut wires to length. Uh, it would have been nice if I had six different colored wires, but I didn't, so I use, had to repeat colors. Uh, it's good to make a wire list. I labeled all these wires, and I have a diagram of where they go in case, in case I forget or get mixed up with the colors. So. Yeah, definitely good to keep a wireless for this so everything works the first time and you don't have to play around with that. But yeah, this is the RFID reader assembly and I guess next we should move on to the control unit. Okay, for the control unit, I have this large project enclosure which I got from Fry's. It's obviously bigger than you need. Really, all you need is an enclosure big enough for an Arduino a button, a switch, and, you know, a little bit of extra room for the wires. Uh, it's, the 
bigger enclosure is kind of good for um, uh, reaction torque against the servo, but yeah, it doesn't need to be this big. Let's put these Velcro strips on here so I can attach it to my door without permanently damaging anything. So yeah, it's pretty good. From the enclosure, what you need to do first is drill holes, or somehow create holes, for uh, wires to the servo pass-through, a hole for a button of some kind, a hole for the Arduino power, and a hole for Arduino USB interface, and also for wires from the RFID reader assembly. Uh, this is in case you want to reprogram it after you've already installed everything. Pretty useful. Uh, also a hole for this switch. It's, I'll explain what this switch is. Uh, since all this, the RFID reader has to connect to pin zero, digital pin zero on the Arduino, if it's active while you're trying to upload a program, the Arduino IDE can complain about that. And it got a little annoying, so I just put this pin on here which disconnects the RFID reader from pin zero. For whenever I'm uploading a program to the Arduino, I just cut off power to pin zero, so it doesn't complain. That's one solution, I mean, there are plenty of others, but this was the most common problem. It took me a while to uh, realize that was the problem when I couldn't upload. But yeah, so that's, that's a good thing to know. Okay, and for the top of the enclosure, I have this, uh, I think it's 24 NeoPixel ring on here. I love this thing, it makes cool lights and good for program feedback and countdown timer and everything. So again, since NeoPixels use three wires, uh, you should need to drill a hole in the top of the enclosure if you're adding something like this just for wire pass through. This, this wire, because uh, I have the NeoPixel on the RFID reader assembly, this wire just goes out to that to complete the chain. Uh, yeah, because all the NeoPixels data out has to continue to the next NeoPixel if they're all on the same strip, which is how I used it. You could have separated them out, but I think I was having problems getting that working, so I just kind of put this little cable out to that other pin so everything worked smoothly. Okay, so yeah, you need a hole in here for any NeoPixel wires or whatever. And yeah, that's all you need with the top of the enclosure. Okay, the next part, after I installed this button and soldered wires to, if you're using the same type of button, what you're gonna need are connections to the power and ground pins, obviously, because it's an illuminated button, so that powers that. And then you need the middle pin and the middle right pin, as shown here. Okay, those are the actual button functions. These will connect to a data pin and ground on the Arduino later when we want to read the status of the button. Okay, so that was a good place to start and add the switch and wires to the switch for deactivating the uh, receiver pin on the Arduino. After I had the Arduino securely mounted in here in this kind of horribly ghetto fashion with just 3M strips, I added this uh, prototyping shield from Adafruit. I love these. It just makes everything a lot easier. You can have separate, um, it's got these entire power and ground rails. It just makes everything easier. So I had header pins on this and everything and just, well, let's go ahead and put that on. Okay, so now if you have your wires cut to length, we can plug them into the prototyping shield. Okay, so using my little wire list, it looks like I have voltage from the RFID reader is attached to the purple pin on here. I have these uh, wires from the RFID thing hooked up to these little header pins, so I'm not actually soldering them to the prototyping shield. I could just plug them in and use the shield for something else if I need to. Okay, so it looks like for mine, I'm plugging in the 5 volt and the ground 
Let's see, I have blue going to ground. So I'll just plug these in up here. Oops, that's all right. Okay, now for the rest of the wires coming from the RFID reader, uh, green I have plugged into my a little uh, switch okay this allows me to kill the receive signal from the RFID reader which can interfere with uh, uploading programs to the Arduino so yeah the switch from D0 on the RFID reader should plug into this switch if you want to follow this same approach okay so we have that one going to the switch and then the switch plugs into pin D0 Uh, the rest of the pins. Okay, it looks like my black pin and okay, it looks like ground and form look need to both go to ground. So I probably could have saved the wire there. Good to know. That's what you learn. All right. Anyway, so yellow. Yep. All right. Yellow goes to ground. So I'll plug this into here, which is my ground rail. Okay, what else do I got? Orange plugs into D7. Which is right here. Oh, you know, I'm not plugging them in through my little opening that I made. Okay, that was dumb. Okay, so now, now that we have those wired up, we can probably plug in the button. Uh, this one goes to 5 volts. And this one goes to ground. And this one also goes to ground. And this one goes to my button pin, which I have at D8. So right there. Okay, that's good to go. Uh, might as well plug in my little uh, electric buzzer tone maker thing that I got from Radio Shack. Uh, I like to plug it in across pins. whatever pin is over here so that I can plug into ground and the data pin without me needing to um, actually use wires. Okay, which is, I have it at pin 11 in my code. So let's just throw that guy in there. Okay, and see it's just right there. So that's good to go. Now on the final of the cables from the RFID reader assembly actually needs to go to the top of the enclosure to the data out pin from this ring, if you're doing that. Okay, I, uh, I really should, I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole in that so the cables look nice. Okay, so now, yeah, that looks just slightly better. Okay, it's small things like that, all right. <laughs> Okay, now that we have the RFID reader assembly wired up to the control unit, got the speaker on there, switch wired, and the button wired up, we should talk about the servo. Okay, so this is part of the project where there is large room for improvement. There, there's a lot of room for improvement over the whole thing, but uh, you need some kind of torque arm to connect to the servo and to the uh, control unit enclosure. Just provide resistance for when it's turning the lock. 
Okay, so I chose a servo. Obviously, it's good for this because it's got uh, high torque. You don't need a lot of precision, slow movement like a stepper motor. Yeah, so servo motor has uh, typically has three wires, power, ground, and the data line, which tells it which um, how far to move. So I have my servo wires coming out here. It's good practice sometimes to um, put a 1000 microfarad capacitor across the power and ground lines. It just kind of smooths out the um, power signal. So something you can do. And yeah, I, so for my system, I have this servo wheel attached, which helps me interface to the lock. Uh, locks are different. This part might require some creativity. Yeah, I just use zip ties and I'll show it when I actually install the system. I have the um, servo mount holes attached to this wooden plate that I cut out and attached to all these blocks that I just kind of drilled holes through. Uh, actually, you know, I just drilled partly into it and super glued them. This is not elegant in the least, but it works just fine. So yeah, feel free to make this much better. <laughs> uh, this requires some finesse. You want the servo, this will require a lot of measuring and stuff. You want the servo to be as even on the lock as you can. If it's imbalanced, it, I don't know, it just makes it harder on the servo. Yeah, just try to get it as uh, good as you can. I also want to mark the position on the servo wheel, a reference position for when you're testing um, angles to turn. So yeah. Okay, so once you have this, you can go ahead and feed it through your servo pass-through hole. All right. Also would be good to put some electrical tape or something to insulate the wires from touching each other where I have this capacitor just jankily soldered on. <laughs> okay, and there we go. It's not pretty, but it's all going to be inside the enclosure, so I don't really care. As long as it prevents shorts. Okay, and since I have this uh, female connector on the feed-through, I'm just going to put a lot of jumper wires here. So on this one, red is uh, the 5 volts, brown is ground, and yellow is the data line. Okay, so let's plug this guy into the 5 volt rail, and this guy into the ground rail. And in my code, I have the servo pin at pin 9. So, yeah, let's go ahead and put this guy at pin 9. Okay. So now that we have all of those wires connected, the only wires left are from the NeoPixel ring on the front of the enclosure. So let's go ahead and pass this wire through with the rest of them. Okay, for the NeoPixels, same as I explained earlier, uh, we want to connect to ground. the 5 volt rail and to the NeoPixel control pin which I think is pin 6 for my code I think there are some NeoPixel practices of adding uh, capacitors also but I haven't had any problems with not doing it, so. Okay, now everything is all wired up. 
and the only thing left to do is to install it on the door. Close all this up. Okay. Okay, uh, I drilled, I used my drill to um, attach the servo torque arm to here. First I measured and then I marked the holes and I drilled it. So this part takes a little trial and error, but yeah, it'll eventually work out. All right. Now there's one more thing. Um, for your wires going to the RFID reader assembly, I uh, shouldn't have it all as one continuous wire if your assembly needs to pass through the door. Otherwise, you could run into some, to some problems. Yes, that did happen to me on my first time, and I had to cut all the wires to pass it through. And then I just recrimped the connections rather than making them look nice. So, another room for improvement. Okay, so I'm going to steal up my RFID assembly now. Yeah, I still have it disconnected from the rest of the wires, so I can pass it through the door successfully. And now I'll attach my servo torque arm. I already have the holes drilled, it's an easier way to do it. 3D printer could probably have made a nice, much better looking setup, but hey, it works. And uh, put some screws in the enclosure lid. The enclosure lid needs to be uh, firmly secured to the rest of the box because it provides the resistance for the servo motor. Okay. And it looks... Well, it looks okay. But oh, One last thing we might need to do I have a 9 volt adapter, wall adapter for the Arduino. That was, uh, I didn't have any power outlets near my door, so I had to add a lot of cable length to it. So, just something to keep in mind. Now, let's go install it. Hey guys, so now that we do have uh, everything assembled, now we can go ahead and install it on the door. I'm going to put some Velcro strips on the door for. You know, easy removal and not permanently damaging the door. You might notice that I did go ahead and add some nice uh, connectors to the wire so it doesn't look like that horrible, crimpy mess. Looks a little better now. Okay, I'll start with the control unit. And yeah, it should just snap on like that. As the servo is very well aligned with the lock. Originally I did um, attach the enclosure first and then I attached the servo to the lock and then I just drilled in this plate to the enclosure lid um, once everything was already aligned. So that way I didn't have to measure it. So yeah, that's, that was probably the trickiest part of the whole thing I'd say. Okay. And now let's go ahead and attach our uh, RFID reader. Okay, so this will just snap into place like so. And pass the cable through. Be careful here, some, you know, closing the door and stress could damage the cables. These have lasted pretty well though, so it's not too much of a problem. 
Okay, we'll put these cables through here. Okay, now using my wireless and nicely labeled uh, wires, we can attach these without confusion, much confusion. And there we go, nicely attached. It looks much better than it did before. Still has room for improvement though, so. All right, that's pretty good. And let's plug it in and hope everything works. Hey, that's a good sound. Okay, looks pretty good. Uh, so yeah, as you might know, it powers on in the lock position. So the servo is currently in the lock position, which means we want to make sure the door lock is in the lock position before we zip tie it. And yeah, uh, all locks are different, so this could be require some creativity, but yeah. I'm just going to slip some zip ties through the holes on the servo wheel and around the lock itself. This part mm, is a little tricky, but you know, make it work. Okay, there we go, it's all zip tied. Uh, for this lock I found that I definitely need one around the top of the lock and the bottom, or it was too loose to uh, fully engage both ways. So yeah, let's give it a test. All right, beautiful. Works perfectly. That's what you like to see. Okay, and I guess now to test the RFID reader. For this implementation of the code, it doesn't read when it's in countdown mode, so I'm going to go ahead and lock it. Perfect. Alright, there we have it. Everything seems to work just fine. One more thing, remember the RFID receiver blocking switch. If your RFID reader is not reading your tags, make sure this is not the problem. Yeah, so that's it. Well, let's go through the code. Hey guys, it's gonna take you through some parts of the code just so you understand what's going on and why I made some choices. Firstly, we have um, these store all the RFID serial numbers here, which is what the code compares to to check against the tags to determine whether it should open the door or not. Okay, so obviously you would fill in your RFID serial number here. You can, um, the code automatically prints out to serial any RFID tags that are not recognized. So you can use that as a way to obtain the serial number from your RFID tags. Okay, so you just fill those out here, change whatever you want. These are tags for my roommates and stuff, and yeah. Have the RFID reset pin, which the Arduino activates to reset the antenna. I should have made a variable for the servo pin, which is pin 9. That's a change you can make if you want. And yeah, that's about it. It includes the servo library and the Adafruit NeoPixel library. Okay, I have um, the NeoPixel strip declared here. I don't think I actually use this one. I could probably delete all references to strip 2. Pretty sure I tried that to separate the NeoPixels, but I don't think I ever got it to really work. Um, I'll leave it in there because I'm afraid if I delete something it'll just stop working, but yeah. Probably don't need any of this strip 2 stuff. Okay, so in the setup, initialize the RFID pins, initialize the NeoPixels, and um, the button pin. And the first thing the code does in the setup is lock the door. It seems like just a good thing to do in case, I don't know, lock is a good default uh, state for the door, I think. And we record the button state because I have that button that I'm using is not a momentary button. So I don't want the button to only activate if it's low or high. So I have uh, record the states all over 
in case just yeah so that a change of state activates it rather than a specific state uh, there's multiple instances across the code where this could be done much better so I apologize for my horrible coding practices but it works so yeah feel free to make improvements and suggest those improvements to me <laughs> probably look at using interrupts or something to make this better so I don't have to do all this but yeah I'll just take you through what I did do okay I have a lot of print statements when I was troubleshooting but it's basically anytime the door is locked the NeoPixel rainbow cycle triggers just a cool visual feedback method to show that the door is locked I like it probably waste power and stuff but hey I like it um, otherwise it turns the rainbow cycle off um, this uh, I didn't actually end up using this this was a troubleshooting thing so you don't actually need that but so the code will continue through, it'll check the state of the button, and if the button's pressed, it'll enter into this statement, because the state will have changed. And if the door is not locked, it'll flash red. If it is locked, it'll flash green. And it calls the change lock function, which is at the bottom, and it basically just if the door is locked, it unlocks the door. If the door is unlocked, it locks the door. Pretty simple. Okay, and here is the RFID read stuff. I copied this straight from a, another tutorial online, which is linked in my uh, GitHub for this code. So, yeah, if you want to check that out, it's a great tutorial. Okay, so it basically any time there's information to read from the RFID antenna, it'll read it and store it and then after it's done with that it will send that string to the check tag function and then it will clear the tag string and reset the reader okay so next I have my accept tone which just plays a nice little tone in case it's accepted same thing for reject tone and here in the check tag function it compares the tag that was read to all of your um, character variables from the beginning. So yeah, if it matches these, it'll you know, flash green and play the accept tone and unlock the door. So yeah, pretty pretty basic stuff. And then it just uh, clears the reader for to read a new tag. And this one clears the um, string, so it just reuses that string. Okay, and this one tells you if it they compare properly. So yeah, it's all pretty pretty basic. Uh, this lock countdown. This is my little NeoPixel uh, countdown light show that just displays the time until um, the door locks. It's let's see, I have a delay of one thousand milliseconds, so. I guess there are 25 NeoPixels, so I guess you have about 25 seconds uh, before the door automatically locks. So, you know. Um, and I have, in my for loop, it checks the button state every time. So if the button state changes, it will automatically break out of the lock countdown and re-lock the door in case you don't want to wait 24 seconds or whatever. This would be a good place to probably use interrupts. I'm, I've never used this before, though. Uh, good potential method for optimizing code better. So yeah, uh, it's pretty simple. And then it plays this tone for the auto lock. Just, I don't know, have a tone generator, might as well use it. These are NeoPixel functions. That's their entire purpose. I think all the rest of this, most of the rest of this is for that. This is the rainbow cycle code, which is what it's usually doing. Um, oh, so yeah, that's the thing. The rainbow cycle doesn't check the button. So if you press the button, you know, you have to wait. It won't um, check the state of the button until after this for loop is complete, this double for loop. So, I mean, it, it, I don't know exactly how long it takes, but it's very fast. So it's barely noticeable, but, you know, that's just something to note. Yeah.
I could have put, actually I did have an interrupt in here at one point so that it would break free from this if the button was pressed. And it started causing some problems and I just removed it. I don't care about waiting uh, one or two seconds for it to read the button state. So, yeah, it's another NeoPixel function. And this is my initial lock function. So, one of, probably the most important thing to know about this code is that you can have problems when you're using a servo motor and NeoPixels. Because the NeoPixels and the servo motor require very precise timing protocols from the Arduino. And those can conflict with each other. I'm sure there are other ways of getting around that, but what I do, what works fine and is perfectly easy, is I detach the servo motor anytime I'm about to do something with the NeoPixels. Actually, the servo is usually detached. And anytime I need to lock it, I just attach the servo, do what I want to do, and then detach the servo. Pretty simple, works out fine, otherwise you could have some problems. The servo gets a little twitchy if you try to do NeoPixel stuff at the same time. So that's an important thing to know. And yeah, now we're in the change lock function. We attach the servo. If the door is locked, it changes the state to false. It unlocks the door, goes into the countdown. Um, it sends the time to the countdown, even though the countdown function doesn't actually use that. So, yeah, that was dumb, but oh well. And otherwise, it locks the door. And, yep. Good to go. That's the code. Plenty of ways to make this better. It's pretty messy, but hey, it works just fine, so feel free to suggest improvements. Yeah, thanks.